Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing a comparison between the all new Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek Edition and the Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. I know this might seem like a strange comparison, but whenever anyone releases a new off roader that's around $50,000, they are inadvertently competing with the Toyota 4Runner. So we have to see how the Rock Creek stacks up against Toyota's crazy off roader that, well, everyone seems to love. Before we get into the video, though, as always, if you're going to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So let's actually start things off with the 4Runner. So we have a naturally aspirated 4 liter V6 that goes through a 5 speed automatic transmission. It's good for 270 horsepower and then 278 pound feet of torque. And with this 4Runner, uh, which is my personal 4Runner, I've been averaging about 16 ish miles per gallon. Now, contrasting that to the Pathfinder, we have a much more modern setup. 3.5 liter Nachi aspirated V6 goes through a nine speed automatic transmission. Now on premium fuel, this is good for 295 horsepower and then 270 pound feet of torque. I have been averaging over 23 miles per gallon with this. So this has more horsepower, better fuel economy. That has a little bit uh, more torque going for it. And obviously everyone knows that Toyota's reliability is just off the charts with this powertrain. But frankly, this V6 is also actually very reliable. And well, that's under the hoods. Now, instead of splitting this up into two separate videos where I have a video where I do a walk around and then a video where I do driving, I'm gonna try to combine it all into one video. Let me know if you guys like this format a little bit more. So starting with the Pathfinder, we have unibody construction, independent front and rear suspension, 4Runner, body on frame, solid rear axle, independent front suspension. So this is basically a truck that we're calling an SUV. And this is basically a car that we are calling an SUV. Now, stylistically, they both look significantly more aggressive compared to their lesser counterparts. So like a 4Runner SR5 and then, you know, like a base model uh, Pathfinder. They both have roof racks at the top and they both have more ground clearance compared to again their lesser counterparts this has 7.7 .7 inches of ground clearance no skid plate protection underneath that i could find i just saw a lot of plastic this has 9.6 inches of ground clearance and you guys can see that trd skid plate there at the bottom so we do have skid plate protection and you can definitely see like the difference with the uh, front ends this obviously is just pretty much like regular pathfinder front end but just made to look a little bit more aggressive whereas this you can see how the front end's been like sculpted to help out with approach angle in the name of off-road practicality let me know which front end you guys like more stylistically now the tire and wheel setup with both of these is actually pretty dang similar believe it or not so our setup here is 265 60 18 over here it is 265 70 17 and notice with the style on the wheels a little bit different so we just have the trd wheels here whereas we have these beadlock style wheels over on the pathfinder but something that i find pretty cool with this pathfinder is these tires as you can see are just as aggressive as the 400 tires you can see the sidewall difference again having bigger wheels and obviously slightly smaller sidewall in general is going to make it so that yeah you're gonna be able to see a difference with that and then notice they both have pretty beefed up fender flares here on the side and of course rock creek and trd pro because they got a flex that they are their off-road packages and then if we look at things from a side view perspective you can definitely see the height on the forerunner compared to the height on the rock creek edition with all that now funny enough they both do not have power tailgates so this thing will pull open it was locked i guess Hydraulic uh, for the tailgate. This has a third row uh, with the seating so you guys can see the storage space behind it. And if we pop over to the 4Runner, again, we don't have a power tailgate. It's just hydraulic. You cannot get a third row with the TRD Pro. You have to get a limited or an SR5, I believe, to be able to get the third row. So we just have more storage space back here, basically. And then if you look at the rest of the styling with the 4Runner. Well, it hasn't changed in like forever. And then if you look at the styling here with the Pathfinder on the back end, definitely they've modernized it quite a bit. I do think the back end of this looks quite a bit more modern, quite a bit better compared to the back end of the 4Runner. Now, popping inside, they both have, of course this thing just locks on me. They both have uh, off-road oriented interiors. So you can see 
we've got these seats that are supposed to be slightly easier to clean and they kind of just look more rugged overall. And you can kind of see that theme with this Rock Creek overall. And one thing I do want to show that's important for off-roading is the fact that, load up screen, we have a 360 camera system, as you can see with a bunch of different camera views. And resolution's actually, you know, pretty dang solid here. We do have dual zone climate, heated seats. We have a bunch of different uh, drive modes here for on-road and off-road use. We have hill descent control as well and so yeah i mean in between the you know four wheel drive system and all these different drive modes it should be able to be pretty capable off-road now if we compare that to the forerunner trd pro interior and off-road tech so first off from an interior perspective you guys can see uniform with these seats so they have easy clean seats these would be easier to clean off compared to the rock creek edition they don't look as cool though in my personal opinion and again i own this thing gauge cluster is definitely a lot more <laughs> ancient looking same thing with the infotainment system now this does have a cool uh camera system but notice that yeah it's not quite as um good looking in terms of the resolution neither of them have like the best resolution in the car industry but this definitely is a step below now something that's cool about the foreigners it does have a power window in the rear and then it actually has a sunroof that rock creek edition does not have a sunroof now this has a rear locker and then it's got toyota's advanced traction control system and this has a traditional uh, four-wheel drive system so right now it's in two-wheel high i can shift it into four-wheel high and then i can go into four-wheel low or it's going with that rock creek it's more like an all-wheel drive system with how that functions and then this does have our like whole trail control system so basically it's got like an off-road cruise control is the best way to put it and then we have all of our uh, terrain select modes so it's got a bunch of different off-road modes I just want to show you guys one more thing before we drive it and that is the fact that we've got these fox shocks here with the trd pro package whereas with the pathfinder is kind of harder to see but we have basically off-road tuned suspension so it doesn't have any name brand shocks or anything like that and well let's drive them Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility over the hood. Both the mirrors, which do have blind spot monitoring. And throughout the rest of the rear. And let's set off. So first setting off in the Pathfinder Rock Creek Edition. And uh, what I noticed right off the bat is that this definitely drives like, well, a car, right? Having unibody construction, independent front and rear suspension. It's got really good handling. Um, you definitely feel like you're kind of closer to the uh, ground and um yeah it just, it just it handles well it drives it's smooth it's comfortable and obviously we talked about this a little bit earlier but fuel economy with this is substantially better than the forerunner i mean it's seven mile per gallon difference that is yeah that is no joke that adds up especially with today's gas prices We'll have to see how that compares to the 4Runner's acceleration. It's pretty good for a Natch aspirated V6 at this uh, elevation. Again, the nine speed definitely helps out because the gear shifts are quick and they're smooth. And so it, it just lends to a uh, really good driving experience overall. And yeah, so like the, the big thing that I noticed here with the uh, Pathfinder Rock Creek Edition is that it just it drives like a, it basically just drives like a car. Um, and the all-terrain tires, they do make a different noise than the regular tires on a Pathfinder, but they're not they're not substantially uh, louder. I wouldn't say that. They're probably not louder at all. Uh, but yeah, just a slightly slightly different noise. Seat comfort's good um, with the Rock Creek Edition. I have done some uh, longer drives in this and uh, the yeah, no back discomfort or anything like that. Um, but I guess to kind of uh, begin to sum things up, and of course we gotta go over the uh, train tracks because we gotta see how the suspension performs with both of these back to back. It really does just feel like any other crossover pretty much. Uh, all, pretty much all modern crossovers are going for the unibody construction, independent front and rear suspension. So it makes it so they handle really well. It makes it so that they're rigid. So again, handle really well. Um, but it, it definitely lends to like a, 
not really a differentiated driving experience. Now, again, this has really aggressive all-terrain tires, so that should help out with the off-roading quite a bit. I'll have to see uh, how that how this performs um, when I take it off-road tomorrow. But uh, that's the biggest thing is this um, basically just drives like any other modern uh, crossover. So you pretty much either like modern crossover driving or you don't like modern crossover uh, driving. Uh, and then interior space is great. It's cool that you can get a third row with this in the, again, this is Nissan's most capable Pathfinder. It's a little bit disappointing that you can't get that with the uh, 4Runner. Uh, the reason I'm saying that's disappointing is because the Land Cruiser is no longer a thing here in the US. And so unless you step up to the Sequoia TRD Pro, which is huge, I mean, it's a, basically the size of a full-size truck, then yeah, you can't really get a three row off-road uh, Toyota at this point, which yeah, I'm not sure how many people actually use the uh, third row in 4Runners, but I think it's just something to consider. And so yeah, overall, I think that Nissan did a really good job with this package from an on-road driving perspective. I think that it looks really cool. Uh, a lot of people have told me that this kind of looks like a Range Rover and the all-terrain tires give it you know, just kind of like this aggressive, uh, beefy look, and uh, that, that's that's the biggest thing that I've gotten uh, with this comment-wise. It just looks it just looks aggressive, and I definitely agree with that. So we're gonna go over the train tracks here, and those off-road that off-road tuned suspension definitely definitely does a good job. And having you know the sidewall of this has also helps out with going over those train tracks. Let's go to the Forerunner. Let's talk about visibility here with the 4Runner. Here's visibility over the hood. Both the mirrors, we still have blind spot monitoring. Then throughout the rest of the rear. And let's set off. So starting off here in the 4Runner. And uh, here's what I have to say starting off is this feels like such a different vehicle compared to that Pathfinder. Again, being body on frame, having a solid rear axle and independent front suspension. It just, this feels like this it basically feels like a tank. That's that's kind of the feeling you get when you get into a 4Runner. And seating position is definitely quite a bit higher. Like you you have more of like a king of the road type feel in this. Because again, ultimately this is like basically a, a truck, right? Now from acceleration perspective. Driving them back to back, this is definitely slower. This does weigh quite a bit more uh, as well. This weighs, I think like 5,400 pounds, whereas that Pathfinder weighs less than like 5,000 pounds. So it makes sense that this is slower. And again, it has the more old school transmission. But, um, you know, the acceleration isn't too frustrating, I guess, uh, being the owner of this vehicle. Unless you're on the highway sometimes. When you want to pass people, it just doesn't really do anything. Whereas the Pathfinder does have some level of passing power. Now, from a ride quality perspective, it's pretty interesting. They're both smooth, but the thing that unibody vehicles cannot do and probably will never be able to do is just capture uh, the like cloud-like ride quality that these body-on-frame off-road SUVs and trucks have. And that's because of that disconnect, right? This isn't nearly as rigid as a unibody vehicle, right? And so when you go over bumps and everything or just little unevenness in the road, you don't feel it because again, it's body on frame. And obviously this has Fox shocks which help, which help out quite a bit as well. Um, but that's something to mention, like this has like almost like a, it's not quite magic carpet level of, of ride quality that I would say I would reserve that for like the Ford Raptor, but it's, it's, it's really good, especially over bumps. Like this, you don't feel it nearly as much as you feel in the Pathfinder. And again, that just comes down to construction. And yes, shocks definitely do play a big part in that. I'm definitely having to get in the throttle quite a bit more with the uh, 4Runner and I'm definitely getting way worse fuel economy in the 4Runner as well. And yeah, this does, you know, kind of wallow all over the place uh, when you go around corners because again, body on frame. And so I'm sure that the California car journalists are gonna say that this is a crappy car because it doesn't corner as well and all that garbage because they don't know anything about cars, it seems like. <laughs> I always gotta I always gotta call those guys out because like, I feel like they compare everything to a Ferrari. They're like, oh, 
If it doesn't drive exactly like a Ferrari, then I, I don't want anything to have to do with it. Um, but this, this definitely feels like uh, an experience uh, to drive. Every single time I drive this, it's just, it's fun, even driving on road. Again, there are definitely some frustrations with the fuel economy, with the transmission and all that, but I don't know, it's kind of fun just feeling like I'm driving around a tank, basically. And so here's what I'd have to say to sum things up. And I understand this is gonna be called an apples to oranges comparison by a lot of people in the YouTube comment section. But here's the deal is I obviously purchased this and I obviously looked at other vehicles that were available on the market around this price range, right? You've got the Explorer Timberline, you have the Pathfinder Rock Creek that can't purchase yet, but is gonna be around the same price range as what this is at. And the reason that I ended up picking the 4Runner over other options is I'm a huge off-road enthusiast and this has added off-road capability and the driving experience. This has a unique driving experience that you just don't get in a lot of modern SUVs anymore because they're all unibody. This, again, it, it feels like a little truck and it's fun. And it, like if my wife always says, this feels like a real SUV and I definitely agree with her. And so what I'd have to say is I think Nissan did an amazing job with the Pathfinder. I think that's gonna be a better vehicle for most people, frankly, because it gets better fuel economy. It has a third row, this doesn't and it's most likely gonna cost substantially less, especially with dealer markups on these TRD Pros, they're ridiculous. Um, that being said though, it just doesn't have the same soul, I guess, that the 4Runner has. And I think that the 4Runner should show manufacturers like Nissan that they need to bring back smaller body on frame SUVs. Like if Nissan brought back the Xterra right now and they sold an Xterra Pro 4X with their, like with Nissan's current styling, and especially with how successful the new Frontier has been, I promise you, Nissan would sell 100,000 units a year easily, just as many as what Toyota sells Forerunners, and they would just be rolling in dough. So I think the new Pathfinder Rock Creek is great, but I think the Forerunner shows that even though this is quite compromised compared to the Rock Creek, it still is the choice for a lot of people because of the old school driving experience that this gives and we know that Nissan could provide that as well. So Nissan, if you're watching this, bring back the Xterra, please. That's gonna sum things up with our comparison between the Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek Edition and the Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. Let me know which one you guys would choose after seeing this video. And with that being said, I'll see all of you in that next video.